Whoever should try to stop us and further create threats for our country, for our people, should know that Russia's response will be immediate and lead you to such consequences that you have never faced in your history. And Nick Holdsworth, just to be clear for our viewers, is that a veiled threat of using nuclear weapons? Sorry, Francois, didn't quite catch the question. Is what we heard from Vladimir Putin there a veiled threat to use nuclear weapons? Absolutely beyond a shadow of a doubt. Why don't you ask Dmitry Babich? <laughs> <It's>... <laughs> hey, 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 hey. hey, Nick, you know, you were saying that you got there in 91. I got there before you, you know, in the Soviet time. And I, I, I have to say that because we are speaking from a democratic society here in France. Back in my day, there was a word called savoc, uh, which was the uh, little... Oh, I know what a savok is. Yeah, remember the little sure. pan that you pick up the, the dog poop with, and you called people who worked for these uh, Kremlin guys, they were known as savoki. And I think it's real important to point out yes. That, that, yes, France 24 is a public broadcaster, but we are not being censored here. We don't have military censorship. Uh, we are telling the truth. We have some great correspondents in the fields who are seeing things yes. and are telling the truth. And uh, I just don't like to hear lies. It's just the beginning. I, I will right say now. to you, Craig, Francois, I hope it's Go okay. Ahead. I hope it's okay, Francois, to, to say this. Craig, you're quite right. You got here before me. I've been here long enough. I don't know if you speak Russian, but yeah, I, I absolutely know what. A, a, a sovak, you speak it badly, I speak it well. I know exactly what a sovak is, and I know what an enabler is, to use a, a word that our Western audience would understand. I would very much like to sit down and have a cup of coffee and a chat with Dimitri. So, Dimitri, if you're still online and listening, let's meet and have a conversation eye to eye, face to face. I'm not afraid to speak the truth from my heart because I love and care for the Russian people, and I don't want to hear, as I've heard from some Ukrainian friends recently, that the Russian people, the Russians are the enemy. That really hurts me. Maledic. I love my Ukrainian friends dearly. I love my Russian friends dearly. And let's be straight about this. What we're talking about is Putin's war. And I did not demonize him. Dmitry Babich, if you're still listening, we can have a cup of coffee anytime. I'll happily talk to you in any venue of your choosing here in Moscow at the time of your choice if I'm not working. I really let's hope talk I... face to face, Dmitry. I hope I'm to, willing to listen you out. I hope Dmitry Babich is listening. I'm just going to very quickly... Yeah, I'm just going to very quickly say... I did not demonise Vladimir Putin. Vladimir Putin is a human being, like all of us. Look, I, it was tongue-in-cheek when I asked the lady in the kiosk, uh, the newspaper kiosk today, about does he have a soul. Yeah, it's tongue-in-cheek. Of course the man has a soul and a heart. He's not using them. He's not using his emotional intelligence. Perhaps he doesn't possess any emotional <coughs> intelligence. I haven't met him, but I've been in the same room with him. I've observed him very, very carefully over the last 22 years. He says what he means. I think it was one of our correspondents. It might have been uh, Rob Parsons or maybe it was Angus Roxburgh writing in The Guardian yesterday or today, I forget which. Angus Roxburgh knows him personally because worked for the Kremlin for a while, former BBC correspondent here. I remember him from back, way back in the 90s. Vladimir Putin says what he means. Vladimir Putin, I don't think, is speaking from the heart. He's speaking from his head, from his ego, from his damaged self, if you would like to put it in those terms. I did not demonise him. He's a human being. He's not the devil. And at the same time, what Vladimir Putin is doing in Putin's war is living out some kind of fantasy in his head about Russian greatness, as Craig so correctly pointed out earlier. I was so pleased to hear a reference way back to Alexander III. If I'm not mistaken, no, it was... I think Only it was on France 24. Blown up by the bomb. Yeah, no, it was, the yeah. Was <laughs> it was. Um, yeah. Just, just Only on France 24, absolutely. Just before we go, uh, Nico yeah, Hines, go what we, I want to put this to Nico Hines because we, we're seeing... Uh, that we're really in uncharted territory. This is very different from what happened when there was the war in the Balkans. It was diff it's different from 2008. Uh, this is happening 
uh, at the doorstep of EU and NATO members. And uh, again, I hark back to those words of Vladimir Putin warning the West, we are in uncharted territory. Yeah, I think it's very difficult to say with any confidence after what's happened over the last week, it's very difficult to say with any confidence at all that Vladimir Putin wouldn't actually use nuclear weapons if it came to it. I do think it's a very different situation in terms of, you know, I think there's been some speculation over the last sort of 12 hours or so of um, per perhaps further incursions into Moldova or um, even into Poland. I, don't, I think it's very unlikely that Putin would move into a NATO country because you know, what he's acting out now is what he believes his entitled view as a, a bad Russian historian, that he can somehow recreate this ancient Russian empire. And he thinks that he has a God-given right or a Stalin-given right to take and exercise control over the people of Ukraine. And I think what's clear is that he does genuinely believe that. So I think what he's doing at the moment is acting that out rather than simply trying to upset or antagonize the West. One final word from you, Anna Garmisch, your uh, friends, your family back in Ukraine. Uh, what's their mindset this evening? Their mindset, uh, whether it's this evening or for the past few days, frankly, even yesterday, they're obviously anxious. Obviously, they won't want all this to end. However, uh, everybody wants to avoid panic and be as ready as they can because it's time to it, now for them. It's time to fight to protect their family, to protect their, their friends. Uh, it's time to protect their country.